Hi guys, welcome to New Wave Coaching Classes. I'm your host Jatin. Today we are going to uh, discuss some of the questions of exercise 4.3 using the quadratic uh, formula. Uh, till, before that, uh, what we have discussed till, uh, in this chapter till now, we have discussed uh, to uh, find the solutions of quadratic equations using uh, factorization method and uh, also you, uh, by uh, completing the square method and also by quadratic formula. Today what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss some of the uh, questions, statement questions of exercise 4.3 using the quadratic formula. But before that we start some with some of the equations which are given uh, in exercise 4.3. So here we have exercise 4.3, I am starting with the second chapter because the first, uh, uh, we are starting with the second question, first question we have already done. Now this is your uh, basic uh, or the standard form of the quadratic equation, right? Now, I have taken the first part uh, of the second question, that is 2x square minus 7x plus 3. Today, we are going to uh, see the implication of uh, the quadratic formula, how we can use the quadratic formula to find the roots of the equation, right? Because if you cannot factorize, if you can't, uh, if you can't do the method of completing the square method, then this method is the most appropriate uh, for uh, finding out the roots of the equation. How? Let's see the implication of this uh, method. See, we have the equation 2x square minus 7x plus 3 equals to 0. The first step is to compare this equation with the general form and write the value of a, b and c. Now, in the previous lecture also, we discussed about a discriminant and discriminant is basically b square minus 4ac and why we find the discriminant because we should know what kind of roots we will be getting if we will be getting the real roots then we will simplify otherwise we will not uh, simplify the or we will not find the roots of the equation right so b is equal to b square minus 4ac we substitute the value of b a and c in the equation what i get so b is minus 7 minus 7 whole square minus 4 into 2 into 3 Right, so upon solving this, what do you get? Discriminant equals to 25 and this is greater than 0. It means the real roots exist. So this is what we have. And after that, when the roots exist, so we apply the quadratic formula to find the roots of the equation. So we have the formula x equals to minus b plus minus root d upon 2a. So this is something new. Uh, which you have not, uh, which we have not discussed till now in any of the previous lectures. This D is basically nothing, but this is the discriminant. So you've learned this formula in the previous lecture, right? So instead of this, you can write D also, right? So our first step is almost complete to find the value of the of the thing which is inside the root. So now I have x equals to minus B plus minus root D upon 2A, and when I put the value of D, D is B squared minus 4AC. You can directly also put the value of d in here, right? Just to modify, just to explain what is uh, the actual uh, uh, quadratic formula, quadratic formula, this I have written, right? So now, uh, the b square minus 4a or the value of discriminant is 25. So we substitute the value here, right? So x equals to, this is minus b, so I write minus, this minus, and the value of b is minus 7. So that comes inside the bracket because it's a negative number. Then plus minus under root 25 because d is 25 upon 2, this is 2a, so 2 into a that is 2. So now what? This is 7, this negative plus negative, negative into negative becomes positive. So 7 plus minus 5 upon 4 and when we simplify this thing, we get the value of x as 3 and 1 by 2. Uh, carrying on uh, with the same thing, uh, this is the third part of the second question. So I have taken 4x squared plus 4 root 3x plus 3 equals to 0. So here also first step would be to write the value of a, b and c on comparing with the standard form of the quadratic equation. So I get a equals to 4, b equal to 4 root 3, c equal to 3. Now the next step is to find the discriminant. So discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So we write the value of b, b is 4 root 3, so 4 root 3 whole square minus 4, then the value of a that is 4 into 3, right? So 
Finding the value, I get d equals to zero. If d is zero, it means again uh, the roots are real, but they will be equal, right? So the so next step is to find the roots. Yes, so this is the uh, quadratic formula. We substitute the values since d is zero so under the root, it is zero, and the square root of zero is zero. So I get minus four root three upon eight. Right, so I get x equals to minus root three by two. See, I have written the roots two times because it's a quadratic equation and it will have two roots. You you remember in the in the lecture of polynomial also we discussed whatever is the degree of of the polynomial or the equation that number of zeros or the roots it will have. So since it is a quadratic equation, degree is two, so we will have to write the same root two times. Right? All right. Now we uh, go to the next question. So now I take third question, second part. And what is given in the second part of the third question? It is one upon x plus four minus. 1 upon x minus 7 equals to 11 by 30. So now what is the first step? See whenever we have fractions the first step is to find the LCM. Right? So we find the LCM of these two. The LCM would be x plus 4 into x minus 7 and what is the next step? After you find the LCM you have to divide the LCM by the denominator. So I divide this LCM by the denominator. So what I am left with is x minus 7. So I write x minus 7. Make sure you are writing in the brackets. Because there can be some mistake when there is a negative sign. Right? So now I divide this thing by x minus 7. What I get? x plus 4 is left. So I write x plus 4 equals to 11 by 30. Now in the numerator. I open the brackets x minus 7 when I open here it becomes minus x minus 4 because there is a negative sign so the signs of the both terms will change so this is in the denominator I have x plus 4 into x minus 7 equals to 11 by 30 now when I simplify this x x cancels I have minus 11 upon then I uh, multiply these two uh, right so when I multiply these two I get x square this x into s x square this x into minus 7x this 4 into x becomes 4x and then minus 7 into 4 becomes minus 28 equals to 11 by 30 right now I simplify this is minus 11 upon x square minus 3x minus 28 equal to 1 by sorry 11 by 30 now this 11 can be cancelled because same on the both sides. So when I cancel the 11 on both sides, what I get this is minus 1 upon x square minus 3x minus 28 equals to 1 by 30. Right? So now what we have to do, we will cross multiply and then we will simplify to get the quadratic equation. So when we cross multiply, we get minus 30, this 30 multiplies here and this whole equation multiplies this side, I get it as x square minus 3x minus 28, right? So I shift this minus 30 on the uh, right side, so when I shift this side, this minus 30 on that side, it means nothing is left on this side, so it will be 0. So that when nothing is left, we have to write 0. So that is x square minus 3x minus 28 plus 30. So 0 equals to x square minus 3x plus 2. It's quite simple. You can apply any of the method to find. See, this is a very easy one or uh, you can write this way also x square minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. Right? So when you simplify, we can simplify this by factorization because it's very simple. So when I simplify using factorization, I get minus 2x minus x plus 2 equals to 0 x common x minus 2 minus 1 common x minus 2 equals to 0 <laughs> so x minus 2 into x minus 1 equals to 0 this means 
if either this is 0, so I get x equals 2, when this is 0, I get x equals to 1. So these are the two roots of the equation. So you can apply any of the method depending upon what kind of equation you are getting. If you are able to form the factors, then it's, it's better you form the factors also. But if you are not able to form the factors, then you should apply the quadratic formula to simplify the equation. Right? Let's see the next question. Now we go to the statement questions of this exercise. We will not be uh, doing all the statement questions today. Uh, we'll, I will be taking some of the statement questions and the remaining questions I will be taking in the next lecture. Right? So because there are many questions, it will become very lengthy. So I go to the fourth question. It's a age question. Is given the sum of reciprocals of Rahman's age three years ago and five years from now is one by three. Find his present age. So whatever the thing they have asked, let us suppose let the present age of Rahman equals to x years. Now what they saying? See, I told you earlier also, if we have to do any statement question, you need, you need to break the statement. What is given? Sum of reciprocals. Now, whose sum? It is the reciprocals. Now, whose reciprocal is required? Uh, Rahman's age 3 years ago and 5 years from now. Means, uh, we have to take the Rahman's age which is 3 years ago and 5 years after this. And then we have to do the reciprocal and then we have to add. So, this is how we are... Uh, um, we have to uh, break the statement and do it. So let's say Rahman's age three years ago. Now what does three years ago means? Three years ago means we are going back. So Rahman's age three years ago. Obviously three years ago when you say your know, age will decrease, it will not increase, right? So we have to subtract it. So it becomes x minus three. And Rahman's age after five years. So after five years, obviously the age will increase. So we add them, right? So it becomes x plus five years. So now what we have to do? The first step is over. We have found the age three years ago and after five years. The next step is to take the reciprocal of these two. So and add them. Now what is given? According to question. Now, reciprocal of this, it means 1 upon x minus 3. And reciprocal of this, it means 1 upon x plus 5. Now, what, are, what, are, what is the sum equals to? The sum is given to uh, be equal to uh, 1 by 3. And now, we can proceed the way in which we proceed the previous question. Obviously, we have to take the LCM here. So, we take the LCM, x minus 3 into x plus 5. And then we have here x plus 5 plus x minus 3 equals to 1 by 3 then we simplify the numerator this is x plus 5 we open the brackets we can multiply in the denominator this is x square plus 5x minus 3x minus 15 equals to 1 by 3 so in the numerator we have 2x plus 2 upon in the denominator we have x square plus 2x minus 15 equals to 1 by 3. So what is the next step? The next step would be, would be to uh, cross multiply. See whenever you are doing the uh, whenever you are doing the simplification of these types of question make sure the signs are correct because if one sign is wrong the question goes wrong. Right? So the next thing would be to cross multiply. So I write 3 into 2x plus 2, this 3 multiplies here and this x square plus 2x minus 15 multiplies with the 1. So it remains same. So I add x square. Now this is 6x plus 6 equals to x square plus 2x minus 15. Shifting both this, uh, this term 6x plus 6 on the right side. When I say these two terms on the right side, there is nothing left and nothing means 0. So 0 equals to Sign changes, right? So 0 equals to x square minus 4x minus 21. Or I can write it as x square 
minus 4x minus 21 equals to 0. Again, this one is again uh, very simple. Uh, we can find, uh, we can do it by splitting the middle term also. But if you are not able to do by splitting the middle term, you can uh, also do uh, you uh, do this question using the quadratic formula. So uh, this time I will we'll try with the quadratic formula. So uh, here a equals to 1, b equals to minus 4 and c equals to minus 21. Now I find the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac. See if you can uh, directly apply the, splitting the middle term, you can factorize it. That is the shortest way of uh, doing the quadratic equation. But if not, don't do the wrong thing, try it this way and you will get the correct answer, right? So this is So this is 16 and this minus into minus becomes plus and this is 84 and I get it as 100 and this is greater than 0. Obviously the real loads exist. So now x equals to minus b plus minus root d upon 2a. So I just put the value minus uh, b is minus 4. So this is minus or minus 4 plus minus 100 and is under the root upon 2 into a and a is 1. So x equals to 4 plus minus the square root of 100 is 10. So this is 10 upon 2. So I get it as 4. So once I take positive sign and then I take the negative sign. So I get it as x equals to this is 14 by 2 7 and uh, minus 6 by 2 this is minus 3. Now there is one very important thing to remember since this question is of age this question is of age so do you think the age can be negative negative age no it can't be negative so what we have to do we have to reject the negative value so i write rejecting x equals to minus 3 because Age cannot be negative, right? So, therefore, x equals to 7, or you can say, therefore, Rahman's present age equals to 7 years. All right, so let's take one more question. We have uh, some time. Now, this question is related with the marks of the subject. Uh, you can read the question from the book. It's given in a class test. The sum of Shefali's marks in mathematics and English is 30. So, there are two subjects English and mathematics. The sum of the numbers is 30. Obviously, we may have to find the numbers. So, we break the statement. We go, go by, by the first uh, line. I write let marks. In mathematics equals to x. Therefore, marks in English equals to see the sum of the marks of both the subjects is 30. It means if one is 10, other would be 20, if one is 12, other would be 18, if one is 16, other would be 14. So if one is x, the other marks would be 30 minus x. So we have got the first thing. How about the same? Had she got two more marks in mathematics? So new marks in mathematics. So what they say if the marks increases in mathematics, so it is it becomes x plus 2. And in English they say 3 less. So so new marks in English equals to 30 minus x minus 3. So what I get here, this is 27 minus x. Now what they say, after we change the marks, the product of the marks is given to us and the product of the marks is given as 210. So according to question, 
what I have x plus 2 into 27 minus x equals to 210. How oh, we multiply? Let's form the quantity equation. So this is 27x, 10x into minus x is minus x square. 2 into 27 is 54, and 2 into minus x is minus 2x equals to 200. In. Now we simplify this thing, this is minus x square, this becomes plus 25x, plus 54, and I shift this 210 on the left side becomes minus 210 equals to 0, because nothing is left on the right side, so it will be 0. Alright, now what we have, this is minus x square plus 25x and when you subtract these two you get it as minus 156 equals to 0 right so, so and again we have to check if the equation is in standard form or not so how we check the coefficient or and the sign of the x square should be positive so to make it positive I have to change the sign of all the terms so it becomes x square minus 25x plus 156 equals to 0. So I am doing it by factorization. It's very simple. It becomes x minus 12 and x minus 13. You will get the factors. So therefore, x will be equal to 12 and 13. So both the values are positive. It means both are valid values. So I, I suppose if x equals to 12, therefore marks in max is 12 therefore marks in English so you remember the sum was 30 so 30 minus 12 it is 18 if x equals to 30 therefore marks in max is 13 and marks in English is 30 minus 30 that is 17. So I have two pairs of values 12 comma 18 and 13 comma 17. So we can have these kinds of uh, things also that we get two pairs of numbers, right? Let's go to the next question now. Now, again, uh, if you remember uh, the exercise 4.1, there was a question of area. Again, we have a question of area that is the area of uh, that is the related with the rectangle, right? Now, what is given? The diagonal of a rectangular field is 60 meters more than the shorter side. So, I make a rectangle here. So, obviously, this is the shorter side, and this is the diagonal. Now what they say that the diagonal is 60 meter more. So this is 60 more. So if I suppose this is 10, it would be 70. If this is 20, it is 80 because it is 60 more, right? So if I suppose this is x meters, so it would be x plus 60, right? What else? What else is given? that the longer side is 30 meters more than the shorter side. So this is the longer side and this is 30 meters more than the shorter side. This is x plus 30. Now we suppose this, we write the statement, let the shorter side equals to x meters. Therefore, the longer side equals to x plus 30 meters and the diagonal equals to x plus 60 meters. Now what? What is the next thing? We have to form the relation between all these three things. So if you look it carefully, this is a rectangle. A rectangle, all the angles are of 90 degree and if you see this thing, it forms a right angle triangle and we know we have discussed this one question in exercise 4.2 also that if we are given a right angle triangle then the relation we used to combine all the three sides is the Pythagoras theorem. 
So we apply Pythagoras theorem. So by Pythagoras theorem, I directly write, I am not writing the statement because you already know what is the Pythagoras theorem that is the hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus the attitude square. You open the brackets, so this is x square plus 120x plus 3600 equals to x square plus 60x plus 900 and then this plus x square. So 1x square gets cancelled on the both side. We shift all of these three terms on the left side and when we shift the sign changes. So what I get, this is minus x square minus 60x minus 900 and since nothing is left on the right side, so what we write? 0, right. So now we rearrange the terms. Uh, this is minus x square. This 120x and minus 60x becomes plus 60x. And this 3600 minus 900 becomes plus 2700 equals to 0. So again, uh, the sign should be positive. So I write x square minus 60x minus 2700 equals to 0. So we can form the factors. Uh, the factors would be something like this. Minus 90x plus 30x minus 2700 equals to 0. So we have, we have got two numbers. I am using the method of splitting the middle term. The product is 2700 minus 2700 and the sum is minus 60. So when I simplify, I get the two numbers minus 90 and 30. So this is x into x minus 90 plus 30 into x minus 90 equals to 0. So x minus 90 into x plus 30 equals to 0. So, substituting each of these two uh, equations equal to 0, when I put this equal to 0, I get x equals to 90 and when I put this equal to 0, I get x equals to minus 30. So, therefore, x equals to 90 and minus 30. Again, we have to reject one value. Why we have to reject one value? Because it's a negative value and the side of any coordinator cannot be a negative. Or you can say side of any polygon cannot be negative. So I reject, rejecting x equals to minus 30 because side cannot be negative. So therefore, shorter side equals to 90 meter. And the longer side would be that is 120 meter. So, my dear friends, this is it for this lecture. Uh, there are many more questions left in this exercise. Uh, we'll try to complete the remaining question in the next lecture. Uh, till then, keep on practicing these questions. If you don't understand, Try to repeat the video, watch it again, still not understand, you can write in the comment section. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, share my videos. Uh, all the best. Thank you from my side. Okay, all the best.